So the Fulbright Scholarship, in case you all don't know, is funded by the U.S. Department of State, and it's meant to increase foreign relations with the host country. So what am I studying? I study life cycle assessment. So a lot of, if you pay attention to the <coughs> corporate world or the media at all, you may hear buzzwords like product stewardship, life cycle management, or corporate so social responsibility, maybe sustainability. So this is a way for a lot of companies, like especially big corporations, Starbucks, Walmart, uh, McDonald's, to kind of prove to the people that they care not only about the profits, but as well as people and the planet as well. So a company like Walmart, they've created a Walmart Sustainability Index, and this is a way for them to rate their different products. So they rate them by energy and resource use, um, the effects, the material efficiency, the how it affects the people in the community. And this is really great that Walmart's done this. It's a step in the right direction. However, Walmart is the one that's rating all these. So it's pretty much in their best interest. Um, so it may be better for a third party to do this. So this is where something like ISO standards or the International Standards Organization comes in handy because they're a third party certification where you can uh, where they have a whole sort of different standards. One of them is life cycle assessment. So what is life cycle assessment? Well, it is the compilation and evaluation of all inputs and output flows into a product or into a system. So the infl inputs may be energy or materials and different resources, and your outputs would be your emissions and your wastes. So in this instance, you can see you can have a cradle to gate, which would be from raw material to distribution. You can have a cradle to grave, which would be raw material to disposal. Or you can have a cradle to cradle, which would be raw material to reuse or remanufacturing into another material. So something like this is what I was studying while I was in Canada. So let's take, for instance, a product that we see every day in life, which would be a straw. Nice McDonald's straw, side door straw, Starbucks straw, it doesn't matter. They come from everywhere. So does anybody know what a straw is made out of? Plastic. Polyethylene. Close. <laughs> so a straw is made up, it is a plastic. Did you say? Plastic. Oh, plastic, okay. So it's actually made of polypropylene. So polypropylene is, comes from propylene, which comes from a crude oil, which you can either drill out of the ground, maybe from the Gulf of Mexico, or you can have shipped in from the Middle East, or you could maybe go up to the Great White North into Canada and pull it out of the Alberta oil sands. So what's in the Alberta oil sands, since I'm, I studied up there and I actually visited it while I was there, uh, that's what I'm going to say that this plastic comes from, or this propylene comes from. So propylene is, or so in the Alberta oil sands is actually actually bitumen. So bitumen is a resource that can be turned into an energy source, just like it could be used as a fossil fuel for burning different oils, or it can make, make plastics. So this is a facility within the Alberta oil sands, which is placed in the middle of the boreal forests, um, where there's abundant wildlife. And so before they actually dig for the bitumen, they have to test the ground. So they'll run uh, test plots and kind of stagger out and cut out the forests in between, which you can kind of see there's a checkerboard pattern. Mm -hmm. So this, is, this kind of messes up with habitats. It makes wolves easier to hunt deer and hunters easier to hunt wolves. And so then after they've tested the ground, then they clear the forest. Ooh. And this is also creates tons of jobs, so at the same time it's you know good in that sort of scene. And they're, they also use the timber, so they would use it maybe to create the paper that was on the straw. And after they're done clearing the forest, then they start digging. So it's about 20 to 50 feet they have to dig down to get the bitumen out. And it's wrapped in, bitumen is a molecule that's wrapped around a layer of water, and then it's wrapped around a layer of sand. So they pull out all of this sand and muck and, and bitumen, and they bring it into, they pump it through hydrologic piping with a bunch of water that starts the separation process. So in a full barrel of 
oil or in like you know a, a whiskey barrel or something you have um, about 10 to 12 percent bitumen and the rest would be water sand and sulfur residue so after you pull out the bitumen then it has to be upgraded so it goes through four different stages of upgrading to become synthetic crude oil so that they have to go through a um, vacuum distillation which separates the lighter fractions a de-asphalting which separates the asphalt from the feedstock a cracking which breaks the heavier hydrocarbons molecules to simpler ones but this also creates the sulfur so then they have to go through a desulfurization phase where it actually removes the sulfur so that it, the sulfur content is below 0.5 percent so that it brings out this sweet synthetic crude oil so then at that point, they have to transport it, either by piping, by rail, by road, <coughs> or by boat, or barge, to either China or to Texas. So then it goes to a refinery in one of these two places, and that's where you, it goes through distillation. So this is the separation of the different hydrocarbons into lighter to heavier molecules. So in this case, you're looking at reduced crude oil, which is the very bottom part. <coughs> And uh, this is really more of a residual matter. And then it has to go through a fluid catalytic cracking unit, which is the FCCU in the red. And that creates ethylene, propylene, and propane. So the propylene, you have three different refinery, or three different grades of propylene at this point, which is a chemical grade, a refinery grade, and a polymer grade. So for the plastics, you're looking for the polymer grade. So at this point, the propylene would be sent into a facility that would actually turn the propylene into polypropylene. So with this, you would need lots of heat and pressure, and this all requires energy throughout every bit of this uh, life cycle. And then it would get shipped to, at this point, to the straw manufacturer. So this, at this stage, then they take the polypropylene, and they mix it with a lot of antioxidants, um, different colorants, and other sorts of plasticizers and other additives, which all of these additives have their own life cycle to get to that stage as well. So it goes through, and they mix it all together, they melt it together, and then it creates a pellet. So then the pellet goes into a hopper bin, which you can see at the top, and it's pushed into a long, uh, skinny extrusion mold that has a screw that pushes the, the material down a line and it heats up the material and brings it into a long straw-like shape and then it goes into another area where it pulls the straw through and it goes through a, a cooling stage which is usually a water bath is what they call it and then it goes to cutting packaging which involves more plastic more paper cardboard, etc., and then it's transported to its final destination, where you take your, take your straw and you put it in your drink, and then you throw it away. And so then it ends up in the trash can. So then from this point, it can go to lots of places from here. It could go to the oceans, and you know, you be surfing, Scotty Pipe, fellow Bay viewer, could be surfing in the middle of all this garbage. <laughs> or it could go to one of the six gyres, which are the plastic mounds that are floating around in the ocean, where it's feeding, they've grown so much that they're forming new bacteria, and it's creating a place where insects, this insect called the halibate insect, is thriving, and its population has grown so exponentially that it's actually... Uh, making its prey, zooplankton, which is the organism that's the basis of the entire oceanic food chain, in danger. Uh, it could also end up on the beaches, maybe down at Bayview Beach, maybe in the San Francisco Beach, on a beach in Indonesia, Hawaii, all throughout the world, where seagulls and pelicans and other animals eat it thinking that it's food. Or it could end up in a landfill where it takes hundreds upon thousands of years to decompose. So all of us will be long gone by then, but that piece of plastic that you drank out of at side door last night 
or at Starbucks this morning is not yet decomposed. Um, so this is just the life cycle of a straw. And think about all the other plastics that you use in life. Plastic bottles, plastic bags, plastic bottle caps, plastic sunglasses, <coughs> plastic iPhone cases. It's kind of infinite if you think about it.